Hey guys, Brad here, and I want to talk today about long-term care. Uh, a long-term care expense, getting long-term care insurance, who should get it, who doesn't, who typically doesn't get it, who doesn't need to get it, all the above. So first, let's talk about risk, okay? What's the real risk with long-term care? Where the, well, the risk is having a large expense, spending down your assets, right? And, and to me, the, the real risk or the biggest risk is for a married couple where you have one spouse that needs long-term care, has a large expense, and then they spin down the couple's assets to where the community spouse cannot maintain their style of living because the other spouse has depleted those assets because of the cost of care, okay? So, so to me, that's the biggest risk with, with a married couple the spouse in the, in the institution, in the facility, or maybe they're at home and they're paying for care. That spouse is draining the couple's assets, okay, to pay for care so the community spouse cannot maintain their lifestyle. So that's the biggest risk in my opinion. <coughs> um, so let's talk about, uh, let's talk about who should get care. Um, and who doesn't need care? And I'm going to start right here. Okay, this is an easy example down here. This something I encountered recently. Single lady inquiring. Um, we, we're doing some planning, and one of her questions was long-term care. Should should I get long-term care insurance? Well, I'm I never really want to be the person that says don't get it or do get it. Okay, I want to provide people with information, and then you make your own decision. So our discussion that we had was, okay, you own your home. You don't own, don't owe anything on your home. Let's say you need care, okay? You're probably gonna have to go to, go to a facility because you live on your own. Um, so you go to a facility, then you have a home. All right, are you, are you gonna maintain that home? And the answer was probably not. Well, I don't need it. Um, might as well sell it. My kids don't live around me, so. And if the kids do live around her, okay, maybe they want to keep the home, so she would keep it. But regardless, if she goes to a facility, her expenses are going, to, her living expenses, and I'm talking about expenses outside of paying for long-term care, are going to drop, and they're going to drop off a cliff, okay? So let's say she gets rid of the home, all right, now those costs are all gone. No cost to maintain the home at all, no real estate taxes. No power bill, no cable bill, none of that. Um, so she could easily do that. And and cost of care is, uh, you know, cost of care, the average nationally, I think, is seventy five to 80000 something like that. Uh, so if it's $7,000 a month, she has $7,500 a month coming in just in her first annuity and social security. And, and also, if paying for care a large percentage of that is going to be tax deductible, okay, as a healthcare expense. Now it's a it's above a floor, um, but yet if it's eighty some thousand dollars, a significant amount of that um, is going to be tax deductible. Therefore, she wouldn't have to pay much in income taxes. Um, so she can easily self fund and pay for care. All right, uh, her not getting care, the only thing that's going to do in her situation is it's gonna be less assets that she passes on to her kids. However, it, it's still gonna be a significant amount, okay? So even if she goes into a facility and has to pay $7,000 a month with these numbers, her assets should continue to grow that she's gonna pass on. So she ultimately decided not to get care. Now, if it was a big concern of hers and she wanted to leave as much money to her kids, as she could, then we would have continued the conversation looking at um, looking at the cost of long-term care insurance, looking at different policies, or possibly looking at another way to pay for it, like life insurance. Um, but that's that's another story, okay? So then we've got two couples up here, couple A and couple B, all right? The couple that I have found is most interested in looking at long-term care insurance is couple B, okay? Who have, they have significant Guaranteed income, FERS annuity, Social Security, FERS annuity, Social Security. Quite a bit of income coming in monthly guaranteed. Not to mention their assets of one and a half million. Now, more often than not, 
this couple, when we look at, we look at our planning software, we run some analysis on it. If they have an event later on in life, say, and say it's early eighties for say a, an expense of five years, costing $80,000 a year and using inflation to increase that expense, this couple can typically still cash flow a long-term care event and in that event not significantly impact their assets okay um they just more often than not it's not something they need to do now they may want to okay again maybe it's a desire of yours maybe you're ultra conservative you want long-term care you want that protection okay i get it um but again we're looking at data i'm looking at information trying to provide information for people to make the best decision possible now the people that do most often need to get long-term care in my opinion and don't is this couple here okay you've got couple a uh, their fixed income is significantly less okay you know they're looking at forty eight hundred dollars a month all right and then their assets are five hundred thousand dollars so let's just say a 4% return here of $20,000, um, around $1,700 a month. And so you got $1,700 a month plus $4,800. Uh, we're looking at $6,500 total, okay, for this couple. So if they have a home to maintain, that you know, one of the spouse is still living in the house and the other spouse needs care of $80,000 a year, they don't have enough income to cover that okay and then the community spouse is still going to have their expenses so they're going to start eating into those assets of five hundred thousand dollars all right so it's I, I just want to do this video talk a little bit about the risk um, about what i found working with federal employees day in day out um in my opinion, this is the couple here that really has the biggest risk and they're the ones that need long-term care insurance the most. However, they have the least amount of funds to be able to pay for that. Uh, long-term care is not cheap. So if you're in a situation similar to this one, I definitely recommend addressing the risk. If it comes up, if you need long-term care, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna pay for it? Um, should you look at getting some insurance right now? Should you look at insuring that risk one way or another? Okay, whether that is, whether that's getting long-term care insurance, whether that is getting a life insurance policy, maybe it has long-term care rider or life insurance policy to replace funds upon death. Um, there's different ways of doing it or doing nothing. Okay, just saying, I, I understand there's risk and I'm gonna take the risk. We're not going to insure it. Um, so it, there's different options. But just, just want to cover a few things here on long-term care. Um, be interested to know your thoughts on long-term care insurance. Are you getting, are you insuring the risk? Um, and then it's, you know, not going to be easy to share that in comments. But um, I'd love to know, fitting closer to this situation or this situation, how many people get long-term care here versus how many people get it here. Okay, hope that helps, guys.